What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs and welcome to the new Rocket Vlogs headquarters. This is my new house in California and forgive the lighting reflecting off my glasses. At any rate, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for tuning in and sorry for taking so long to get to the point where I put another video out. A few weeks ago, me and my cousin Shane, or Postart as you guys know him, went to Kansas City to build the next anti-gravity group project that is our two times upscale Arcus sounding rocket. It is based on a real full scale rocket that was used in the 1950s and 1960s and we thought it would be fun to build an upscale version of a full scale rocket because why not, right? And just to throw a little extra zest at it, it's flying on an N motor and eight J motors in just a few weeks in Argonia, Kansas at Airfest. So if you'll be at Airfest, you will get to see this rocket fly and I'm about to roll the footage of us building it, but before we do that, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Hims. Whether you're losing your hair, having mental issues, or losing functionality of your personal rocket, so to speak, Hims has a solution for you. Of course, with all of those situations, one of the biggest issues is getting yourself to the doctor, having that initial conversation, and Hims eliminates that entirely by making the whole process online. No embarrassing in-person consultation, just an opportunity for you to solve your problems at home without any judgment. Let's face it guys, you don't have to be old to start losing your hair, but you don't have to be any older than you currently are to start doing something about it. And that goes for mental health issues and ED as well. Best of all, if any medication is prescribed to you from 4 it is shipped to you 100% free in discreet packaging so you have no need to worry and nobody needs to know about you and your treatments other than you. Find the support you need for treating ED, mental health, or hair loss all in one place at 4 Click the link in the description and the pinned comment to start your free consultation. Thank you so much to Hims for supporting this video. Now, without further ado, here is the build of the anti-gravity group's second big rocket project, the Double Arcus. All right, Taylor, explain to us what's going on over here. We're making a giant foam nose cone, and none of us have made our own nose cone before. So this could go really, really bad. I tried to do my homework, and I made this crazy jig before Braden and Postart got here. And um, basically, I just got two like carrier bearings, cut a bunch of foam, put it on a half inch all thread. The idea is we're gonna hot wire cut and spin it a million times to get the rough shape. And then hopefully we can put the all thread in a drill and spin it and would sand it smooth, following the contour of our pattern here, which was achieved by printing a full-size nose cone off a rock sim and taping 10 sheets of paper together and then cutting it on MDF to make a pattern. So about $6 worth of two buys and some free MDF and $20 of foam. And now we get to glue it all together. Work smarter, not harder. That's so satisfying looking. It sure is. Same hot wire feathers. <laughs> Look at this Taylor, it looks like you know what you're doing over here. It might work. Is it insanely light? I mean, with the all red, it's not. 
It's like a 3D movie. So I want to write my face. Dude, it really is one of those like uh, this. Look, the, the coupler will go on here. For full disclosure, the whole nose cone creation process went a little bit better than any of us anticipated that it would, but after we finished smoothing it out, it was back to Taylor's house for a fiberglassing extravaganza. Of course, while this foam nose cone probably could take some abuse, an end motor and 8Js is a little bit of a different story than your average high power rocketry flight. We didn't want to see it fold in half, so we used two different sized solar composite 10 ounce fiberglass sleeves, piece them together so that we could fiberglass the entire nose cone. Then it was onto the airframes. These are standard 9 and a quarter inch cardboard airframe tubes that we got from Ken Allen at performancehobbies.com. And I want to give a quick shout out to our friend Joe Hill for connecting these tubes to Taylor in Virginia so that we didn't have to pay to have these massive things shipped halfway across the country. Just like with the nose cone, these tubes could probably handle some abuse, but maybe not the abuse involved with 8Js and an end motor, so we fiberglassed these as well. We used solar composite sleeves and the solar composite heat shrink tubing, and while we've seen plenty of people have successful use of the heat shrink tubing, we're not sure if we used too much heat or what went on, but it was impossible to get off in some spots, and we'll probably forgo it on the next time around. So we were operating under the assumption that it was only going to shrink, what does it say, one to two inches? It might have been an inch a foot. Oh, that would make a lot more sense. Because we came up quite short on the shrink tape on both tubes. This one on both sides and that one just on one, but fortunately we got Matt. Matt can come sand it. Right there. The man, the myth, the legend, co-driver Myers. Now, as you may have seen in the live stream where we fiberglass the fins, instead of using mylar or heat shrink or anything like that on the fins, all we did was use a layer of 10 ounce glass and then a layer of four ounce glass. The super fine veil layer of four ounce glass actually made for an incredibly smooth surface. And this is probably going to be the technique I use moving forward on any fiberglass project. After everything dried, we trimmed off all the excess fiberglass and went to bed. The following day, Macho Matt himself showed up and we started construction of the actual fin can assembly. This entailed a whole lot of trimming and sanding and fitting and sanding and preparing and sanding and sanding and sanding. So if you have missed the sanding channel, I have such great news for you because this is only the beginning. Despite a giant storm trying to rip Taylor's garage door off, we managed to get everything glued together and assembled. Macho Match is here. And he's been given his first task. What are we working on today, Macho Matt? We're gonna we're gonna cut some tubes in half using this uh, dial caliper, digital dial caliper. So we gotta first figure out the very middle of it. That looks about right. <laughs> Would it help to know that I know how long they are? You can't cheat. I can't cheat. Yeah, you're right. You gotta yeah. measure it. Yeah. Whoa, just a fine Dremel here. <laughs> a what? I said a fine Dremel. But you know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm going for. Alright. Just like with the 12 inch Punisher, once the very basic motor tube assembly was glued together, we slid it into the airframe to use the fin slots as guides for gluing the fins on. Once the fins were glued in place, we slid everything back out the back end of the rocket so that we could proceed to do fillets all over the inside of it before it once again got slid in and glued in permanently. But first, we gotta check some clearances. Why is that, Taylor? You never know when you get sloppy with the old epoxy. Oh, actually, the. Oh. <laughs> mm. Is it pretty close? Yeah. Uh, I gotta blow the ends up. Yeah. Yeah. They fit perfect. Oh, what? It's so much better than the plotter tubes. Oh, oh man. Don't what if these don't actually fit motor cases? Dude, don't say that. Go. Effort. I'd, I'd like it to be on record that I petitioned to use phenolic for the 54s as well and even bought some. 
Let's all just keep that in mind through this segment. The four. <laughs> That's like the iris. Yeah, we basically made the iris. Oh my god. Wow. Remember how fast that took off on the N2220? Wow, that's questionable at best. Huh. Uh, uh, um, this is a two times upscale Arcus. It's nine and three quarters in diameter. One quarter. One, qu one, one of the quarters. Nine and a quarter inches in diameter. It's got a um, cluster of nine motors, uh, a 98 millimeter, four 54s, and four 38 millimeter. Yeah. Um, well, we're finding that it weighs less than ideal, but 40 pounds, right? About yeah, like 50 pounds. Yeah. Oh, all right. Not bad. 50, 50 pounds. You think? Yeah, thanks guys. We were expecting about 85 pounds, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah. we're That's still cool. working on where the extra 35 pounds is gonna come from. Yeah. Paint. Also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we wanted to stand it up, but now there's a thunderstorm coming. So yeah. Yeah. it's so light it might actually blow away. <laughs> what are we gonna do for a parachute? Two parachutes. Streamers? Two Cirque 3 XLs. Nice. Which will be more than enough, apparently. Where are we going to stand it up at? It's probably in the grass. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Does it stand up a lot easier than the... Uh... Yeah, that makes it seem pretty big. That is dark. Oh, oh my god. That's a big argus. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty sick. Yeah, it is. And it weighs nothing. Oh, oh. If they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> is it coupling falling? <laughs> Shit. It's good. Oh, no. It's good. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, coupler's way down there. It's super. Yikes. Well, it's good that it's, uh... All right. <laughs> Fortunately, that didn't cause any destruction, so we took the rocket back in, set up some external fillets, and did those as usual, and then, as promised, we're taking you guys out on a virtually endless supply of the sanding channel. We had an idea.
you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Braden Carlson. If you want to see this rocket fly here in a few weeks, make sure you are subscribed. I'll be posting the video as soon as I possibly can. And if you're going to be in Argonia or you've been on the fence about traveling to Argonia to go to Airfest this year, maybe our project will help convince you that you definitely should. Aside from our rocket though, there is more than enough to be excited about at Airfest. I'm super excited as usual, even though my drive got five hours longer than it has been, and it was already 19, it's still good, we're still going, Argonia is one of the best rocket launch sites in the country. If you want to keep up with this project, that project, and all the other projects I've got going on, here's a hint, there's some really cool stuff coming up here at the new house in California with my close proximity to friends of amateur rocketry, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you want behind the scenes pictures, images, and conversations, check out patreon.com slash rocketvlogs or become a channel member by clicking join below today. Otherwise, I've got merch available at rocketvlogs.com and if you want to help support but not financially, the best thing you can do is press the like button below, leave a comment, and share this video with your friends. For now, my name is Braden Carlson. You just watched a Rocket Vlogs video and I'll see you next time.